porcupine meatball tomato soup. So I've par cooked three quarters of a cup of rice, just regular white long grain, short grain, doesn't matter, whatever you have in the pantry. This happens to be long grain rice. Three quarters of a cup of rice. We cook off for five minutes only, not the whole cooking time. Just parboil it basically. We have for one pot of soup, we have a pound and a half of what we call meatloaf mix, and that's a combination of ground beef, pork, and veal. Of course, you can use a plant-based meat substitute, a turkey, either beef, pork, or veal, all, all up to you, but this is a mixture of beef, pork, and veal. And this is seasoned already with salt and pepper, and I always add a little red pepper for my family. And the soup itself is basically a thinned out tomato soup that we cook the meatballs as dumplings in the soup itself. And then we add a bunch of broccoli, Rob. All I did with this was cook it about three minutes in salted water to get a little of the bitterness out. And then we cold shock it, of course, and drain it on a clean kitchen towel. So we're gonna chop this up, throw it into the tomato soup where the dumplings are all simmering. So to get the soup base going, a large onion and olive oil, or you can use olive oil and butter if you prefer. You get that going with a big fresh bay leaf and a little salt to get the juices to extract from the onion and turn the sauce nice and sweet. So we grate in a little garlic once those sweet onion juices are hanging out in the pot. So then we're going to add in bone stock or broth of any kind. Uh, I'm using beef, of course, because we're making uh, three meat meatballs. And we're gonna put in a 28 ounce can of crushed, diced, or hand crush them, or use your paddle, your kitchen paddle, to cut them up. Uh, Italian tomatoes. And we'll pop the lid on that. And let that come up to a simmer. We can chop through our blanched chima, chima de rapa, broccoli rub. As you get towards the tougher part, make those pieces teeny tiny itty bitty. We're ready to cook our dumplings though, and that's really pretty much what we're doing. The porcupine meatballs are actually being cooked as dumplings, not meatballs. We're going to roll them and drop them into the tomato soup that we're making, which is kind of a thin tomato soup right now. This soup has come up, as you can see, to a full boil, so I'm gonna knock it back just a hair. You can keep it at a low rolling boil to drop the dumplings in. And then it's your choice. If you wanna make it a little bit thicker, you can add passata. Back at the ranch, we have the first of two cheeses, both pecorino and parmigiano. I was just chopping up a little handful of parsley and two sprigs of fresh oregano. You could use a teaspoon of dried. And we're going to add some parsley and oregano to our mix. We're going to grate in a little garlic. Our binder is not breadcrumb. It's the cheese and the par-cooked rice. And then one large or two medium egg. And I actually like a, a few dashes or a splash of Worcestershire. And then we just do this. Now, you could use a paddle and you could use an ice cream scoop and all that. Like a rounded tablespoon, the palm of your cupped hand is roughly the size you're going for and roll them all and then drop them into the pot and then we cover the pot and let those cook for a bit. I tore in a little bit of basil, and here are our dumplings cooking along. I added a little bit of passata, not much, maybe a cup, cup and a half. Then you're gonna take the entire bunch of your, only cooked it a couple minutes, your broccoli rabe or your broccolini, right, and drop it down in there. And let it cook uncovered a few minutes more to thicken up a bit. And then it looks like this guy. So then we take out the thickened sauce and the meatballs and the greens. And then we take a little bit of shredded or grated cheese and a little bit of the confetti. And there you go.